So, um, last time, who remembers what we looked at when Jeremy was preaching? Ah. The Christmas, okay. Jer- exactly. King Jeroboam and Christmas. And we saw, right? We saw how that what Jeroboam was doing was related to how Christmas came up about. And you cannot worship Yahweh any kind of way, right? Pastor Micah could not have a lady on the side and say, oh, it doesn't matter because when I'm doing this, I'm thinking about Denise. There's no such thing, right? Okay, so we're going to recap, and we're still talking about the kings of Israel. So let's, let's recap here. The first king, though illegitimate, was King Abimelech. And then uh, we, we saw how he was one of the um, sons of Gideon, and he, he killed just about all his brothers and became king. That's not how you become a king. You don't kill your brothers to become king. Yahweh makes you king because the nation of Israel belongs to Yahweh. And just about every minister in the house of Yahweh is raised by Yahweh. You can't just say, oh, you know what? I'd like to be a pastor of that church. Yahweh raises up people for his people. All right, the next one. We saw that then the first legitimate king was good King Saul, and Saul was a good king. But good kings can become corrupt, and he became bad King Saul. And then we went down to anointed King David. Any minister of Yahweh's people must be anointed. By who? Yes, but who is Yahweh within us? The Holy Spirit, right? We've got to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. When Jeremy stands up here, it's not Jeremy's words, but the Spirit. So you got to judge me, folks, you know. you got to judge me. So is really what Jeremy is saying, is that really the word of Yahweh? Huh? That's good for you and for me. All right. Then great king David, right? And then after that, or even great kings, men, women who are standing in Yahweh can fall. So, but the good thing is that he, he became repentant king David. If we sin, we got to repent, saints. We gotta repent, turn around. And then we saw that David has a very good legacy, the legacy of King David, even to this day. And when in uh, Yeshua's time, people weren't saying, Oh, um, Yeshua, son of Josiah, or son of Hezekiah. It was Yeshua, son of David, because of that legacy. Then we went up to wise King Solomon. And then Solomon, the backslider. Uh, Solomon, his hurts. And then, because of his backsliding, Yahweh divided up the kingdom into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. King Solomon divided kingdom. And then we talked about King Jeroboam and Christmas. And so today, we're going to talk about King Jeroboam and the two prophets. I think this is the, 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 um, the sermon that uh, Sister D doesn't like, you know, the, 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 you know, because it's quite sad, you know. And I was preparing this sermon, and I was like, oh, Yahweh, I'm just so, so tired. So I didn't really make any notes. I'm really just reading 1 Kings chapter 13. When, uh, I will let Yahweh lead, right? I mean, you gotta, right? If we're going to depend on the Holy Spirit, we got to depend on the Holy Spirit, right? I mean, you can throw away that iPad, right? We still got the Bible, right? This physical Bible, right? And then even if they say, you know what? No, Christianity is bad. They throw this away. What should you have? Oh, Yahweh, thy word have I hidden in my heart. I have not seen, I guess, but, but, you know, but I, I haven't yet memorized 1 Kings chapter 13. But it's coming, right? I could just preach out of my heart. But so let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 13 because really, the verses are not up there. But we're going to recap, though. Thank you, Sister Charity, for, for that. Just to, to recap, how, how did what King Jeroboam was doing end up with the two prophets? Because that's who we're really going to talk about, right? And so from last time, we learned that uh, 1 Kings 12, 26 to 27, and Jeroboam said in his heart, now the kingdom will turn back to the house of David. So Yahweh told him, you know, I will make you king over 
the bulk, I mean the vast majority of the tribes of Israel. But then he thought, the temple is in Judah. If people start to go back to Judah, they're going to remember, oh, you know what? We should really be under King Rehoboam, so let's go kill him. But all that was his own mind. He was thinking that in his own mind. And so, next verse, please. Next section. If these people go up to offer sacrifices in the temple of Yahweh at Jerusalem, then the heart of these people will turn again to their Lord, to Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me and return to Rehoboam, king of Judah. He believed his own thoughts over Yahweh's word. How many times do we do that? Yahweh tells you something. But, oh, you know what? No, no, no. What if this happens? What if that happens? And we're going to see, right? Because the the story of the two prophets is about that. That Yahweh tells you something, but somebody who appears to be respectable comes and tells you something contradictory to that. Right? So we're going to see listening to Yahweh at, at all times. Next section, please. So the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. And he said to the people, you have gone up to Jerusalem long enough. Behold your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And then the next section. So he built these two, two calves. And he set one in Bethel, that's in the south. And the other he put in Dan, up in the north. Then this thing became a what? A sin for the people. For, yeah, for the people went as far up as Dan, way up north, to be before one. Terrible things, terrible things. And then, he also made temples on high places and appointed priests from among all the people who were not of the Levites. Only Levites could be priests during that time. Now, here's uh, another verse. And Jeroboam appointed a feast on the 15th day of the 8th month, like a feast on the 25th day of, of, of December. That's not Yahweh's day. It's not Yahweh's day. It doesn't matter if you're singing songs to Yahweh. It doesn't matter. They were worshiping before the calf and saying, oh, praise Yahweh. That's not, Yahweh didn't tell you to do that. That's not Yahweh. Right? So, like the feast that was in Judah, and he offered sacrifices on the altar. So he did in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves that he made. And he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places that he had made. So we're going to continue from here. And who knows what Bethel means? Yes, it is a place. Beit El, the house of Elohim, house of God. All right. So, oh, there's another verse. Okay. So the king took, wait, no. That's, okay. All right. First Kings chapter 13. We're going to read that. And so turn to your Bibles. Do you, have that? Do you still have your Bibles, please? Let us turn to our Bibles. So I'm reading from the ESV. I could choose my version here. I could do the ESV. And it says, and behold, actually, no, we're going to read from the New King James today. And it says, and behold, a man of Elohim went from Judah to Bethel, right? So Jeroboam is in Bethel offering sacrifices. By the word of Yahweh, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Then he cried out against the altar by the word of Yahweh and said, Altar, thus says Yahweh, behold, a child, Josiah by name, shall be born to the house of David. And on you he shall sacrifice the priests of the high places who burn incense on you. And men's bones shall be burnt on you. And he gave a sign that same day, saying, This is the sign which Yahweh has spoken. Surely the altar shall split apart, and the ashes on it shall be poured out. Okay, so let's just, uh, I think I have a picture regarding this, right? So that um, Jeroboam is in Bethel with the priests, and they're offering sacrifices. And then this man, Yahweh sends this man from Judah, comes up to Bethel, and he starts proclaiming against what Jeroboam is doing, against that uh, altar. So it came to pass, 
When King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of Elohim, who cried out against the altar in Bethel, that he stretched out his hand from the altar and said, Arrest him! And then his hand, which he stretched out toward him, withered so that he could not pull it back to himself. So he said, he sees this man, he's speaking against the king. So he said, arrest him. But then his hand remains like this. You can't pull it back. Oh, oh. Then what did he say next? Right? Then his hand, which he stretched out toward him, withered so that he could not pull it back to himself. The altar also was split apart and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of Elohim had given by the word of Yahweh. Then the king answered the man of Elohim, Please entreat the favor of Yahweh your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored to me. So he wanted him to get arrested. Now he had his hand withered. Either it became stiff or it just became limp. You know, oh, now, now pray, pray for me. So the man of Elohim entreated Yahweh. He prayed to Yahweh. And the king's hand was restored to him and became as before. Now that rare, like, that's a miracle, right? I mean, that right there should show you, okay, you know what? What I'm doing is, is wrong. So then the king said to the, man, to the man of Elohim, come home with me and refresh yourself and I will give you a reward. So, oh, now we are buddies. Now we are friends, right? What I was doing was wrong, but come home uh, to the king's palace and, you know, take a rest. But what is the response of the man of Elohim? But the man of Elohim said to the king, if you were to give me half your house, if you said I would rule over half the whole nation, I would not go with you, nor would I eat bread, nor drink water in this place. For so it was commanded me by the word of Yahweh, saying, You shall not eat bread, nor drink water, nor return by the same way you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way he came to Bethel. So, okay, so when we see this man of Elohim, right, did he obey Yahweh's word? Up to this point, right? He, he obeyed, so, so because... We see here the same principle we see in Matthew 18, right? That if a brother has done something against you, you go to him. This is Yahweh going to Jeroboam, telling him what you are doing is wrong. So Yahweh didn't just go up and just, you know, start to destroy Jeroboam or his family. No, he went and told him, right, what you're doing is wrong. So he sent a prophet. So when you do something wrong and a brother or a sister comes to you, don't be all high and mighty. Oh, you know, this is, this, is, this is my life. This is how I want to do things. You know, oh, you, you, you're judging me. No, saints. Humble yourself. You've been caught. It's good. It, I'm, look, I'm telling you, it is better to be caught by one of us than by Yahweh. Because when you stand before Yahweh in your sin, it won't be pretty. It won't be pretty. It is always better to be confronted by a human being who is telling you about Yahweh than by Yahweh himself. So the man of Elohim went to Bethel, spoke against the altar, and then he went back home. He went another way. Now the next section. Now an old prophet... That, that is verse 11 of 1 Kings 13. Now an old prophet dwelt in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of Elohim had done that day in Bethel. They also told their, their father the words which he had spoken to, to the king. So an old prophet lives there, in, and they said, oh, so that's what happened. Now he's one of the prophets of Bethel, but maybe he wasn't there. I mean, sorry, no. Bethel had the priests. But he's one of the prophets of um, Bethel there. So his sons tell him what happened that day. So he said, oh, okay. Now, mind you, at this time, King Solomon had been in idolatry for a long time. So there is, there is idolatry. It's been going on for a long time. Verse 12. And their father said to him, which way did he go? 
for his sons had seen which way the man of Elohim went who came from Judah. Then he said to his sons, saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him and he rode on it and went after the man of Elohim and found him sitting under an oak. Then he said to him, are you the man of Elohim who came from Judah? So that's the scene we see there, right? That the old prophet meets the young, the, the, the man, the man of Elohim, and he's sitting under an oak tree. So right there, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, is he tired? <laughs> like, why, why is he sitting under, you know, the tree? So this old prophet, you know, he asked him, are you the man of Elohim that came from Judah and spoke against the king? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, come home with me and eat bread. So the same offer that the king made to him, right? Then he said, I cannot return with you nor go in with you. Neither can I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. So he's still in uh, the northern kingdom. For I have been told by the word of Yahweh, you shall not eat bread nor drink water there, nor return by going the way you came. Then the old prophet said to, to him, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of Yahweh saying, bring him back with you to your house that he may eat bread and drink water. But he was lying to him. Verse 19. So he went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water. Verse 20, now it happened as they sat at table, so they're having this meal, the word of Yahweh came to the prophet who, bro who had brought him back. And he cried out to the man of Elohim who came from Judah saying, thus says Yahweh, because you have disobeyed the word of Yahweh and have not kept the commandment which Yahweh your God commanded you, but you came back, ate bread and drank water in the place of which Yahweh said to you, eat no bread and drink no water, your corpse shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. Ah, uh, that's like, okay, wait, what's going on here? So it was after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled the donkey for him, the prophet whom he had brought back. When he was gone, a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his corpse, his body was thrown on the road, and the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the corpse, and there men passed by and saw the corpse thrown on the road, and the lion standing by the corpse. Then they went and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. So just, how, how, how are you feeling about this right now? I mean, so, so Yahweh spoke to the prophet who lied, intentionally lied to the man of Elohim. And he said, because you have done this thing, you won't go back. So, because you disobey Yahweh's word. So, we're going to talk about here, like, how do you know who to trust? Because that man, he, he said he was a prophet like him. So, he was intentionally lying. And if you've read during this time, people really respected prophets. Like kings would call them father. So it's like if, if somebody you respect, like your father, tells you something that is not, uh, it is contrary to the word of Yahweh. So this is what we're going to talk about today. Right? And uh, just as the story goes down, I'll try to read it real uh, fast here. Now when the prophet, that's verse uh, 20, wait, 26. Now when the prophet who had brought him back from the way heard it, he said, It is the man of Elohim who was disobedient to the word of Yahweh. Therefore Yahweh has delivered him to the lion and has torn him and killed him according to the word of Yahweh which he spoke. And he spoke to his son saying, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled it. Then he went and found his corpse thrown on the road and the donkey and the lion standing by the corpse. The lion had not eaten the, the corpse nor torn the donkey. And the prophet took up the corpse of the man of Elohim, laid it on the donkey, and brought it back. So the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. And I'm like, I don't think I like this old man. 
<laughs> to me, this is, this is wrong. This, this is wrong. But he, he mourned for him and buried him. Then he laid the corpse in his own tomb, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. So it was, after he had buried him, that he spoke to his son, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the tomb where the man of Elohim is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the saying which he cried out by the word of Yahweh against the altar in Bethel, and against all the shrines on the high places which are in the cities of Samaria, it shall surely come to pass. After this event, Jeroboam did not turn. Even after this, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil way. But again, he made priests from every class of people for the high places. Whoever wished, he consecrated him and he he became one of the priests of the high place. So we're seeing here now that Jeroboam's heart is starting to become hardened. And this is what happens when you refuse to hear Yahweh's word. You start, your heart starts to become hardened. Now you're going to do whatever you want to do. And this thing was the sin of the house of Jeroboam, so as to exterminate and destroy it from the face of the earth. We can go now about 200 years later, and we see... There was a king, Josiah, who is, of all the kings, he's my favorite because he was like, he had a heart just for Yahweh. And he did what the man of Elohim prophesied actually took place. You know, it happened. He destroyed altar and he burned the bones of the priests there on that altar. So now let's look at, the man of Elohim, right, he did the right thing, that he, he heard Yahweh's word and he went up to prophesy against Jeroboam, right? That's, we, we give him that, right? But then, so he does the work, then he starts to go back. And I don't know, maybe he was tired or, do you think he was tired? Why was he sitting down uh, under the tree? Why? Okay, so he didn't eat anything. Okay, so, okay, so, so if, if Yahweh tells you to go somewhere and say, don't drink any water there, do you believe he would provide enough energy for you to get back? Yes? Right? Whatever, if, if Yahweh gives you an assignment to do, trust and believe you have everything you need to do that work. So the first thing that... If Yahweh tells you, we don't stop in areas of sin, okay? If, if you get tempted by drinking up stuff, maybe don't drive on the south side, right? Because there are bars on every block on the south side, right? So we don't go to places where we could be tempted. And Yahweh warned him already, you know? So why he had stopped, I don't know. So a lesson there, wherever we are, we do not stop or play around in areas of potential temptation. Now, was it a sin to stop there? I would say, well, Yahweh didn't say that exactly, but I think it would have been good to, you know what, get the job done and get back home. So he's waiting there. Why? I don't know. So the old man hears this, right? And he's one of them. He's probably a respected prophet and saying, oh man, so somebody was bold enough to go against the king and say this. I'm just thinking, you know, in his um, head. And he, he goes and tells them, oh, I'm a prophet like you. And he's thinking, oh, this is somebody who's like my father and he, he's being good. But then he says, when the prophet tells him, why don't you come back home and, you know, take a rest? He said, but no, Yahweh told me I'm not supposed to eat or drink any water in this place place or you know I need to get back home but he said oh no an angel spoke to me All right an angel spoke to me and said that um you can do that but he was lying to him so then what we need to understand saints is that if Yahweh has told you something right and it's especially if you see it in the word it doesn't matter 
who comes and tells you some of the things. Because Yahweh did promise in the Torah that he would send prophets among you who would tell you to go against the word of Yahweh, right? So if this man of Elohim, you know, had been reading his Torah, was here, he, would, he would have known, no, this is the test from Yahweh. You are not supposed to go against what Yahweh told him. The man of, he should have said, you know what? My father, thank you for saying that, but I do not believe it. I need to do Yahweh's word. If indeed this is Yahweh's word, Yahweh will come and tell me himself. It is better to err with what Yahweh has told you, to disrespect people for the sake of obeying the word, than to say, oh, you know what? Um, okay, okay, yeah, I, I, I believe you because what? You're a pastor or because you're older than me or you need to obey the word of Yahweh, no matter what. And many times we face this scenario where, you know, we, we want to please our family or we want to please our parents because we are walking in a way that's different from the way they're walking. And Yeshua already told us we need to have a heart that is in love with Yahweh to the point where our parents, our family feel like, oh, you hate them, Right? But our heart should be so that no matter what, we stand on the word of Yahweh. And even Paul, Paul performed many miracles, right? He did many things, but the Bereans, this, this uh, verse, um, but even then, do we have, uh, uh, sorry, the next one? It says, now these Jews, thank you, Sister Charity, these Jews, the Bereans, were more noble than those in Thessalonica, they received the word with all eagerness, meaning what Paul was saying was, yes, we believe that. That sounds great. But when they went back home, what did they do? Oh, when, whenever they were gathered, they examined the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. This is why the scripture tells us that, look, you got to read the word. Because those who do not know the word can be tossed to and fro by the wind. This sounds good. But it, that, 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 if it's not the truth, it's not the truth. It doesn't matter how good it sounds. You need to know the word and stand on the word. The only way that you will not fall is if you're standing on the actual word of Yahweh. Right? Not on what somebody said, but the actual word of, of Yahweh. And then the verse before said that, um, Do not believe every spirit, but Test the spirits to see whether they are from Elohim. Even the words that I say, I'm speaking to you now. You need to make sure that what I'm saying is in the scriptures, right? Because I too, I am a servant of the Most High, as you are. So if I make a mistake up here, you can come and say, you know, Jeremy, um, that was a great sermon, by the way. But, but, but this part, you know. You know, and, I, and, it's, and I should be humble enough to receive correction, right? Because if, if I'm too proud or you can't talk to me like that, or I need to be humble enough to receive correction because there is only one king in this house. There is only one king. We are all sheep under one great shepherd in this house. So the man of Elohim should have listened. But then we think, okay, so, so they're sitting down and eating food. And then Yahweh doesn't speak to the man of Elohim. He speaks to the old prophet, right? And this old prophet, you know, he is a prophet that he hears from Yahweh. But what I would say, he is backslidden, all right? He is not right. He's doing half and half, right? So he probably felt embarrassed maybe that a prophet came from Judah and spoke to our king and said, maybe I should have been doing that, but he wasn't because the king had been doing that and the prophet was in that place but was doing nothing. And so if Yahweh has placed you somewhere to be the light, you've got to be the light. And if somebody comes doing Yahweh's, don't feel embarrassed or feel jealous You've got to be the light wherever Yahweh has placed you. 
right? So Yahweh speaks to this old man. And yes, what Yahweh said, what he spoke was the word of Yahweh. Because when he went out, a lion met him. And he died. But then, he, they mourn over this man, you know, him and his children. And um, they say, well, when... And he calls him brother, and I'm like, man, that's just wrong. <laughs> like, you are responsible for this man's death. Don't be calling him brother. But that's what he said. So how do we reconcile this, right? Because we've learned here that Yahweh will test, and, he, and it's one of the tactics of Satan is to speak through people we respect. If those people aren't shored up, right? And we saw that, oh, Right after Peter had proclaimed that, Yeshua, you are the Messiah. Right there, Peter knew, okay, there's a closeness between Peter and Messiah. So I'm going to tempt him. Tell him you know, don't go to the cross. You know, that's, then Yeshua recognized that, right? And even when Yeshua was about to go to the cross, when Satan went to Yahweh, who did he ask for? For Peter. Right? For Peter and Yeshua knew about this and said, I'm going to pray for you because Satan has asked Yahweh permission to tempt you. And Yeshua, knowing all things, he knew that, yeah, he would fall. But when you are restored, encourage your brothers. So we have to be careful. You know, we have to have our ears perked up because then sometimes if you're living, if even believers, if there are areas in our lives that are not surrendered, to Yahweh, and we get into our flesh, Satan can use that, you know. And I, I, I have learned to just have a lot of grace and love for you folks because sometimes I'm like, man, why would she say that? Or why, why, why would he do that? And I'm like, oh, you know what? Maybe, you know, you know uh, I don't know. But love covers a multitude of sins. I got to love you folks so I, I'm not mad at you, right? <laughs> You gotta love me too, right? Because sometimes I may do things that you don't like. But thank you for loving me, because I don't hear much that often. So thank you. I appreciate your love. I do. I do. So how this man of Elohim, right? I mean, sorry, the, the old prophet, he was obviously wrong, right? But do you think that he repented? And that he, um, he's in the presence of Yahweh this day. Some say no, some say. Okay. So Sister Jamie brings about something important, right? That he repented, but the king continued in his wickedness. So obviously we can assume that he never preached. You think that that's valid? Yeah, right? Like, like Jeroboam, I mean, the, yeah, even after the man of Elohim came and preached, right? He didn't. The what? And the signs happened, right? But still, I mean, James 2 does bring up a valid uh, point. But, you know, still, like, we see the Jeroboam's hard of heart that his heart was hard like, so and, th and 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 this is the thing of people who ask for miracles i won't believe in yahweh until i see something the word is clear right if they won't hear the law and the prophets they will not hear even if somebody came back from the dead a miracle as great as that if they are not willing to hear the word that is preached today it doesn't matter what miracle is performed. They will not believe. They will not believe. Right? So some say yes. Those who, who say that the man, that, that the old prophet repented, why do you say that? Bury me with him next to him in the bones. Like he's like, I did this. I'm taking responsibility. Bury me with him. You know, I'm, you know, my 
All right. Okay, so to the day. Okay. He was repentant. But the good thing. Part of the savage fall, too, was the reason, if you read verse 25, part of the fact that that old prophet set that young man up, mm -hmm. why he killed, could be why Jeroboam stayed away from was. He had to say, people saw his body and they went and told. Mm. So when they went and told, it said, oh, see, Amen. Even though all that happened at the altar, that all happened because his witness was going to try to stop him dead. Mm -hmm. So that was a good thing. <laughs> yes. I should have said yes. Yes, like so we we see that our sin doesn't just affect us. There's no such thing as a private sin. No such thing. It affects us. It affects us. And sometimes sin can, sin can go so deep that it affects your children and their, your children's children. It is a very dangerous thing. All right. So here's my take on whether that man, that old prophet who I hear, he's not right at all, right? But was he repentant? So we're going to see like when the prophecy was fulfilled. What did King Josiah do? Right? We're going to jump to 2 Kings verse 20, uh, chapter 23. So we're going to travel 200 years later. Right? 200 years later. And so, we're going to... Um, and what's going on here is that uh, King Josiah... Is just he they received the book of the law, they realized, look, we have been living the wrong way until they repent. And this repentance, as we know, repentance is just not in what you say or what you think, it's what you do. You change your ways. So they go out and they destroy all these idols all over the nation. Right? We're gonna jump to um verse 14. 2 Kings 23, verse 14. And it says, And he broke in pieces the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden images and filled the places with the bones of men. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel. So whoever is writing this realize, oh, wait a minute. What he's doing is actually the fulfillment of that prophecy 200 years ago. And the high place which Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to, sin, uh, to sin, sin, had made both that altar and the high place he broke down. And he burned the high place and crushed it to powder and burned the wooden image. Verse 16. And Josiah turned. He saw the tombs that were there on the mountain, right? And he sent and took the bones out of the tombs and burned them on the altar, which is desecrated and defiled it according to the word of Yahweh, which the man of Elohim proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. Then he said, what gravestone is this that I see? So what is the name on this uh, tomb here? Then they say, oh, um, they said, so the men of the city told him, it is the tomb of the man of Elohim who came from Judah and proclaimed these things which you have done against the altar of Bethel. So what Yahweh said, he would never go back to his home to be buried there. He would be buried right there next to uh, the altar of Jeroboam. And he, he said, leave him alone. Let no one move his bones. 
So they let his bones alone. And the bones of the prophet who came from Samaria. Right? So the old prophet was buried with him. And I, I believe um, this passage is also in Second Chronicles 34. So the fact that King Jeroboam did not say, I, I don't know if they were able to, to tell after 20 years of, you know, decay, which bones were, were whose. But he didn't take the bones of the old man and burn them on the altar. So that may mean that, you know what, he, he said, okay, you know what, he, this man repented. Because here I'm seeing Josiah is just being moved by the Spirit to destroy all these altars. I see the sisters saying, we were right, we were right. That's just... <laughs> That's just what I see here, right? That they say, oh, this man repented because Josiah did not burn his bones on the altar, but all the other priests' bones were burnt on the altar. So we could say that he, he repented because he was looked at like the man of Elohim who came from Judah. So, but the, the point here, saints, is that we ought to have, first and foremost, we've got to have a he- uh, an ear for Yahweh's word, right? Many things, many people will tell you to go against you. Even people that seem to be nice friends, you know, they'll tell you, oh, you know what, like, one person told me once that, look, because we, we have, like, different doctrines, and, and they were saying, oh, let's, um, for the sake of our friendship, let's, um, you know, Maybe put away some, some things. But then, like, okay, which, which commandments should I put away for the sake of our friendship? Like, there's, there's, there's no such thing. To me, that's sin, right? Because if we believe that we're supposed to follow all the word of Yahweh, there is nothing that I can put away for the sake of their relationship. There is nothing. But if you believe that, okay, you know what? We don't have to believe all the word of Yahweh. Then, yeah, there's some areas where, okay, we can put this away, but there is no such thing. For those who believe what Messiah said, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Elohim. I can't, because if I put away even one, <laughs> that is a sin. And if I'm putting this away for the sake of our relationship, what am I doing then? Oh, idolatry, because I am willing to put away the word of Yahweh for somebody else. No. Right? When Yahweh said, come, let us reason together. He's saying, okay, let me put away this. For, you know, he, what he's saying is, you need to come to where I am. That's reasoning with Yahweh when you agree with him. That's reasoning with Yahweh. So, I'm going to leave you with these. Um, let's go back to those uh, verses that we, the last two at the end there. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from Elohim. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Many people think when Satan comes to, he comes with horns and a big red tail. And no, he's coming as a nice guy. Somebody and, and, and most false prophets, they don't come and tell you, oh, don't believe in Yeshua. No, you can believe in Yeshua, but also this. Yahweh wants pure worship, only him. False prophets will give you the truth and lies. And I'm telling you, Yahweh wants pure worship, to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. In Yahweh, there are no lies, there's no shadow. It's pure light, pure truth. And the next one, the Bereans were more noble. Let us say that the the people of congregation of Yeshua are noble because they go and they examine, right? Throughout the week, we are reading and seeing, making sure that what we're being taught is correct. Is anything up there, Yaos? Yahweh bless you. Shalom. Shalom.